All right, y'all, welcome back. Uh, this is not a regular scene you guys are used to seeing out of an intro for us, but um, I like to look at life as a book, and this is just a new chapter in the book that we're, uh, we want to start a podcast here and uh, talk about mostly outdoors, some events that are going on in the world maybe. But um, like I, think I said, we should, I'm not to interrupt you, but I think we should like um, do like everything. Like I, I mean, hunting and outdoors that would be awesome. Definitely. But I think like if we like um, venture out on some things, I think that would be awesome too. Definitely. And then like I've seen a lot of people I looked up to on this platform do it, and uh, the people that are in the industry with me, or the industry I'm trying to get into, and uh, they have a lot of success with it, and a lot of people like that. So uh, I just want to try it out, see how it goes. Saved up all my pennies and dimes, and we bought the set. And uh, it's a hope very you. Nice set. It's a beautiful set. Oh, I love it. So I hope it all works out. Hope you guys really enjoy it, and uh, we'll keep doing them. We're gonna keep them short at first, maybe half an hour to forty minutes, and maybe we'll go longer, you know, going down the road. But uh, something to just to listen to in bed, you know. Definitely. And now I want to introduce my first guest on the podcast here at KJC Outdoors, my brother Dino. How's it going, buddy? Um, it's going pretty good, man. I can't How, wait. How's things been, man? It's it's been good, you know. Uh, you know. With everything going on in the world, it's uh, we it could definitely look up, but very, very true, man. It's it's been. I something. don't want to get into politics. I know you love politics, but uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna stay right <laughs> out of politics. Yeah, right I, I don't like to bring that to the <laughs> Fair enough, good old you too, but uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep my uh, language um, profound. I'm gonna try my best. Well, we might slip up, y'all. I mean, we're having some adult beverages here. Yeah. Drink responsibly, everyone. Absolutely. But it's it's gonna be fun. I'm really excited about these new ventures, like uh podcast everything going on whole bunch of guests coming on i uh, just got done finishing the video hope you guys uh, enjoyed that one because it's gonna be out a little bit after that but a lot of work man put in the effort put in the work yeah. how's how's life been working for you man it's well we work six days a week <laughs> we sure do even the brother knows but uh it's been pretty good man you just yeah. gotta stay busy stay at it sometimes you get low on energy and you just gotta you know find that freaking energy to push you back up and just keep going man absolutely absolutely but we'll ask you a question here do you know oh. so Oh yeah, so I right hope you're the start? right off the start. Oh sh. Oh. Yeah, oh, we almost, almost just swear. That's all good. That's all good. It's gonna happen. That's it's gonna, gonna happen. happen. <laughs> Definitely, it's in my vocabulary. So you're an outdoors person. I mean, fishing more definitely. Absolutely. Uh, you like the outdoors, as in playing basketball and everything like that. So fishing is definitely your go-to if you're gonna go out in the outdoors. Absolutely. Not so much hunting. But what do you? How do you feel about hunting? I, I like I, I give you guys all props, a thousand percent. You know, I've seen um, I've seen close some some of my close friends um, go out. They wake up like crazy early. Um, I get, like especially especially deer hunting up in upstate New York. Especially deer hunting. Um, come winter time, you guys are you know you're up and at it, uh, freezing freezing your you know giblets off ninety five percent of the time. Maybe not even see anything throughout those times. I mean, Amen. You definitely you definitely been through that. Um, I know a couple close friends have definitely been through that, but. Uh, um it's definitely it's a, it's a it's a it's a great sport and you guys um you guys definitely bring it to the table when it comes to that and even if you guys don't see anything you guys um you guys give it your all you put in, you put in the time you put in the effort you know you guys i see you pops out there always shooting um trying to line your guns in a lot more goes into it than actually everybody knows especially if they're not a hunter but um you know i grew up around you guys you know so i've seen um multiple multiple hours put in um by you guys um I, I I look up to you guys when it comes to it, definitely. Definitely, and I, I like to use it as in, like, there's more than just killing. I understand, like, everyone has their own, own opinion on killing animals and Absolutely. everything like that. But, um, I mean, I feel like if we're going to go back to a Bible verse, you know, grab your bow, grab your quiver, go out to the field and harvest some game for me. And uh, if you really think about it, they were put here for food. Mm -hmm. Now, I hate to see a deer hit on the side of the road. I'll Absolutely. say that multiple times because this goes to waste. But if you're going to hunt ethically – and uh, try to put the deer down as fast as you can. If you're going to eat it, definitely. If you're not just a horn hunter, I mean, there's people out there that horn hunt. I'm not going to be hating on them or anything. Mm -hmm. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. But just definitely going out there and harvesting them and putting some meat in the freezers. It's just really, like, satisfaction, especially Absolutely. when you sit down at dinner, man. And, I mean, you eat venison. Yeah, I love venison. Absolutely. I love mama's cooking. I love, you know, I've seen you. Uh, I love jerky. Um, yeah, I eat, I eat deer meat um, from my brother and from, you know, whoever wants to, like, serve it up. Uh uh, I'm definitely not biased against it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, like he said, it's it's a sport, and if you appreciate the animal that you're going to hunt, um, I mean you, that that's the main that's the main you know like the objective is to uh, you got to appreciate what you're doing and appreciate the animal more than more than anything you know. So definitely, and like so going back to like small gaming, it's a different <clears throat> story. But usually, I will not shoot anything I don't eat. Mm -hmm. 
whether that be I know I've other, seen you eat rabbit you've, right you've shot rabbit and you've you know he's even made it into like a stew or or something he's he my brother Kyle he doesn't he doesn't shoot things just to uh just for fun he doesn't do that uh, anything he does if it's um you know even when they're fishing he he you know he doesn't I know, I know on the channel you've seen him eat some fish and things like that and uh but if he's not going to eat it just know that he's not going to kill it. I can tell you that for free. All right, I'm going right. to tell you that. Right, and I let's. It just comes back to the point of having a heart when you're going to go out in the woods, and uh, you still got to feel for animals. I don't like shooting small ones. Now, have I? Yes, when I was younger, I mm -hmm. definitely shot some small ones. Mm -hmm. I, I've passed multiple small ones this past season, as everyone's seen. Mm -hmm. I'm not so much a big horn hunter because we don't have the restriction antler restriction in our area, but definitely I think going in the future, DC has a new plan coming up for the horn. But I was definitely targeting a bigger buck. Now, if I got later in the season, this past season, and there was a smaller one come out, I would have because, like I said, just put more meat in the freezer, food on the table. But I try to change now. Like, as I said, younger, yes, I shot some small ones. Happens. I think it happens to most of us. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you just got to go from there and learn and try to be more respectful with the animal. But I definitely still have a heart for the animals. Like, I don't like to see them suffer. I like to just mm -hmm. clean ethical shot, let them run off, mm -hmm. you know, die off. And, uh, yeah, take I've heard care. multiple stories about you, um, you know, I've asked you, like, uh, did you see anything? Yeah, but he was too far away. You never take a shot that's not going to be, um, you know, a critical shot or anything that's going to, you know, leave that leave it out there for the coyotes or anything like that. So, Right. Um, I don't I don't like this. And some hunters, like, they'll end up shooting one and let it lay overnight. I mean, that's the most ethical way because that's how you're going to find it. But just, I mean, they don't sleep. People yeah. that do that, especially if it's a giant buck, doesn't matter if, even if it's not a giant buck. Any animal, you just know it's out there suffering. You just you don't sleep at night. It's a tough one. It's a tough one to swallow, definitely. Multiple hunters, multiple buddies kind of vouch me on that one, but it, it's crazy, man. It is, it is. And so, uh, small gaming. Do you, do you remember small gaming out there with Josh and me? I do, I do. Um, so, let's go back to it because I say that we don't shoot things and that we don't eat, but um, I know for a fact that uh, I've had, you know, multiple occasions where we do shoot birds. Um Obviously, we're not going to be, you know, um, eating those birds. And, you know, what, what's going to be really left of them? You know, um, I do remember doing that. That was fun. You know, small gaming. I, I did a little bit of small gaming. Um, I guess it's just not right up my alley. You know, like um, not not the whole killing aspect of it. It's just um, you know getting out there and you know putting that time and effort into it. Um, but I know if somebody's passionate about it, they're going to do it regardless. So. Uh, but I do remember when we were small gaming with Josh and, and you, and let me tell you, uh, there's some good memories in there. It's, it's fun. It was definitely fun. Definitely yeah, fun. definitely memories you're going to take right down to the grave with you. <laughs> and um, it's it was it's really fun because, like, you go out there and you get a whole, you get on some squirrels, you get the call going, mm -hmm. and you see squirrels coming in, flying through trees, and mm -hmm. you shoot, you miss, and you just keep chasing them around the tree because that's what squirrels used to do. We used to take our hat, throw it on the other side of the tree and stand there, watch them run back around, shoot them off, but... We definitely ate some squirrels. Now, like you said, birds and stuff. If you shoot the Tweety birds and stuff, you can't, I mean, there's not really, but you still got to do the population control. Absolutely. For sure. Um, the only other thing I will say that I don't eat is like the uh, the predators. I don't, yeah. I honestly don't feel bad about mm. killing predators mm. because predators will go out and if the deer is down, they'll take them down, they'll mm. gut it alive. I mean, <laughs> they're yeah. just ruthless, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Very, very ruthless. But, um, now, do you remember when we were out uh, small gaming? And I already know where you think I'm going with this. Do you remember when you had the wrong barrel on your shotgun? I do. And you couldn't hit a broadside of a barn with it. No, because <laughs> it was the slug barrel there. And you're just throwing BBs down the slug barrel, no choke on it. I mean, yeah. when they leave that tube, they're as spread as far as anything. <laughs> I mean, maybe you hit them with one BB, but you definitely didn't kill it. Absolutely. That, definitely remember that. That was funny. That was very, very funny. Oh, that was hilarious. Uh, I mean, we went out muzzleloader hunting with you before, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was deer hunting. I mean, you've been deer hunting. Yeah, I've been deer hunting. Um, if you want to get on that topic, we can. But uh, I've definitely been deer hunting. Uh, maybe like what a handful of times, maybe. Maybe. If even if that, uh, I do remember spooking some deer for you and Josh. Uh, so yeah, and we came up on these. Uh, I was <laughs> I was pretty damn young here, but uh, we came up on these deer. We were on some state no state land. Yeah, state we were on some state land, yep. and uh, we came up on these. I think two doe that were. <laughs> We were sneaking up in on him, and, uh, well, Dino, we got it all set up. We were getting ready to pull a shot, and Dino yeah. sneaking up behind us. Because, of course, I mean, curious hunters, we were young. We wanted to come up and sneak up on these animals, and, uh, well, he hit a patch of ice with the <laughs> – hit a patch of ice, and uh, 
he slipped and fell on his tea kettle pretty hard. Uh, but uh, definitely and did. the deer ran. They looked right over, ran off. I mean, it was a laughing story, man. Who's this tall guy that just took a spell? Yeah, right, well, exactly. That's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Definitely. And then that same day, we set up the blind. Yeah, yeah. All small hunting blind. Just yeah. went out there. We basically now, mind set... you, I just want you guys to know. I don't know if you all know. My brother is six four. I'm six seven. Uh, my brother in law's how, how tall do you think Josh would be? Put him at like what five six, five five seven. Maybe five five, yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh, I say five six, five seven. No, you go... Oh, I mean he, he's, I mean compared to us, but yeah, yeah I, I'd say something around that. Maybe five six. Now we're all on this tiny little blind. Go ahead, I'll let you take it away. Go ahead. Yeah, we have one muzzle litter, so we were just out there joining Josh in a hunt, and uh, we get it all set up. We're in there tucked in like I don't know, I don't know, sardines in a can, basically. <laughs> and we uh we got it all set up and. Basically, we said, okay, if it's because we're all able to hunt, we're old enough, we just didn't have our own muzzle litters. And uh, basically, Josh says, if it comes out your window, you can see I have, I'm handing you the gun. Dean, if it comes out yours, I'm handing you a gun. And if it comes out mine, I'm, hand, I'm gonna take a shot. But it's funny, we get in there, we get all snuggled up, and uh, well, not snuggled up, I guess, all set up in there. And uh, <laughs> and you remember what he said? I do remember what he said. What do you say? Who brought the cards? That's right, <laughs> that's right. Who brought the dang cards? Uh, well, we sat there for a while. But um, definitely going back to you, deer hunting, man. It's not like you just, you, yeah, you did it for a handful of times, but mm-hmm. you still sat through and did it the legal way. You did uh, mm-hmm. the whole hunter safety course. Yeah, I did you that. You did that. I mean, that's a 10-hour course, even longer, I think, back mm-hmm. then. So, uh, I mean, you definitely did the right way. Just something you didn't fall in love with. But I mean, Yeah, you, I gave it a shot. You know, it grew up in our, it went, it went through all our, you know, our whole family. Our whole family is hunters, you know. Um, so, you know, I gave it a shot. You know, I saw, growing up, we always saw dad, you know, go out there and, you know, get home from work, you know, grab his gun and, you know, go out there and sit, sit for a while. So, you know, obviously you want to try to follow in your old man's footsteps. Um, nonetheless, you know, uh, and you did definitely. Um, it just wasn't on my alley. I, I, I put the time in in the beginning and uh, there's some stories there. But uh, he uh, I remember some cold mornings and cold, you know, cold sitting. Uh, I do remember that. Uh, so I know what I, I can say. I know what you guys go through, but uh, I've done it for, you know, a handful of times. Uh, I've only come across uh, one deer in the sights. Uh, you oh. want to get on that right oh, now? Yeah, we'll get right on it right oh, now. Oh, boy. So, here we go. I was about 13, I think. I had the good old 20 gauge with me. Dean had the uh, 20 gauge, and he was 15 at the time. So, uh, my parents, well, my dad was across the road with my brother in law. So, my sister and my mom took us down. We were heading to our hunting spot. And as our, we were going down over this hill, we spotted some deer. We lived on this campground we care took for about, my belt's nine years, I think nine it was. Years, yep, yep. So, we were heading to the, hunt, the hunting location, and we saw these deer. So, we kind of did this strategic, re- like, Try to get ahead of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, we, we tried to get the strategic move on them. So we got around, got where they should be coming through, basically. And then we got all set up. Sure as crap, man, these deer come straight, right where, perfect, man, right where you thought they were going to come right in, man. And uh, they were actually closer to Dean. I was down below the ridge in case they tried sneak it down off. And uh, he was about sitting center where he can get a shot up top or straight out in the middle. And uh, these deer, they started to come right in. My mom and my sister, they sat back probably about 50 yards behind us. We were just sitting there, and you hear them just coming now, in. mind you, that's my heart. <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah, exactly. His heart was just a going. You could hear the deer coming in from a ways away. They start getting closer and closer, and they start getting there, man. And uh, what happened? You can tell me the story, man, from there. You take it over. Um. So, yeah, they were, like like you said, um, they were coming in closer and closer. You know, I could hear them, and... I understand what you guys go through with the adrenaline. You know, it's it's definitely insane. It's it's wild. It's a whole different feeling when it comes to it. even if it is a doe. You know, um, these happen to be both does. Uh, and uh, I remember leaning against a tree, um, you know, trying to get myself stable. And uh, I let them come in to my cross arrows, uh, my cross sights, whatever you want to call them, my, my sights. Uh, and uh, I did end up pulling the trigger all right they were probably i don't know i'd say like maybe 15 20 yards out uh i ended up pulling the trigger i thought for sure i hit one right i didn't see how far they were out with that is how close they were i would say maybe that because 15 20 is pretty close is it yeah i mean i mean 15 20 that's like a bow shot but i mean i've missed that close before it doesn't matter it It really doesn't matter i know i know i i'm just you know i'm just balling it right now but uh I, you know, I ended up pulling the trigger. As soon as I pulled the trigger, I thought I hit it, you know. Um, every hunter, I feel like when they pull the trigger, they have this, you know, this, it doesn't matter. They have, like, at least a 25%, you know, 
something in their brain as soon as they hit it. Um, instantly thought I was going to throw up. Instantly. Instantly. Yeah. Instantly. It didn't even matter. I was like, yeah, I'm going to throw up. And I didn't help the cause. I ran up there looking for blood, and I see this log. <laughs> I, I'm Like I said, folks, I was 13 years old. I see this log about... 80 yards out in the distance and i just raised my hands like he smoked it <laughs> he smoked it. he smoked it it's down for the count and uh i start walking over there now he's just a dry heaving doesn't matter you know buck fever is real even if it's a doe even if it's your first deer it's my first deer you know exactly I mean, it's, it's the first thing that I, you know this is the first time i've seen a deer this close besides a car definitely you know? exactly um so i i run up there and well, that's, I come back around and I say, uh, that was a stump. <laughs> yeah, a log down, a tree down, and, uh, well, kind of hurt his heart there for a second, but yeah. we well, searched and searched and searched, man. No blood, no, no blood at all. So, yeah, I definitely missed it. I took one shot at a deer, and um, I definitely missed it. And uh, when it comes to the conclusion of it all is uh, you, you miss 100 shots you don't take, I guess. Amen. If, if you want to look at it that way. I mean, I'll um, tell you right now, I can't hit the broadside of a barn with a shotgun. So if that thing was standing <laughs> around 15 yards... I would have missed it for sure. <laughs> well, I, I definitely missed it. Um, you know, uh, but what you guys as hunters go through, you know, um, it's a whole different um, aspect of, you know, an everyday person doesn't look at it like it's, you know, like if somebody that doesn't hunt, they don't understand like what actually goes into it. Not only the work that you guys put in, because you guys put a lot of work in. I've seen you, you, the old man, a lot of my friends put multiple, multiple hours. I'm talking... Even multiple. before season. Yeah, before season. Scout and everything yeah, like scout that. scout and everything like that. You guys are, you know, trying to find out the best place to put up a blind, trying to find the best place to put up a put up a tree stand, trying to find, you know, and the amount of, like, you know, I, I remember trying to, like, you know, just even hit you up to hang out, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, I got to go do this for hunting, you know, and I know that when hunting season comes around, Kyle, unavailable. That's he's right. unavailable. All right, he's, put, he's, he's putting in the work. He's putting in so much work for you guys, and trying to crank, crank out the most most content he can possibly do. Um, and there's a lot that goes into it. You know, now now that he's, you know, bringing you guys along with him, um, there's a lot more that goes into it than anybody sees. You know, not only is even hunters. Not, not you ask, like, you know, if I was to go ask a friend that knows Kyle and, you know, even if he's a hunter, like, um, you know, now that he's bringing you guys along with him, it's just extra steps of, you know, more time that he puts in for you guys. And it's it's actually unbelievable, like, how much you actually do. Um, for your community, man. It's crazy. And I'm so proud of you, though. I appreciate that, man. Like, I'll save my vacation time. I mean, you just went over. I'll save my vacation time just for hunting season. Yeah, you do. It's you crazy. You really do, man. And he does. He saves, you know, his time, and he, he cashes them in all, all all on the hunting season. And, uh, you know, I see him come home, you know, and don't let him fool you. He takes power naps. You need him after you get up that early. You know, oh, you got him, man. Definitely. You got him. Um, but, you know, he's right back out there before, you know, dusk. You know, he gets out there around, you know, you know, two thirty, three o'clock, and he sits till dark. It's, it's insane. You know, I've seen him, I've seen it firsthand, and, and I know that as a lot of a lot of you know people that watch him, um, he, uh, he he puts a lot of work in, just like you all. And um, you, I'm just happy along. I'm just happy that he gets to bring you guys along with him, and you know, for that journey. Even if he doesn't see anything, you know, he, I've seen him upload some videos. And, you know, he doesn't see anything, but there's a lot more that goes into hunting than um, an everyday person sees, and. Uh, and as long as you're doing it right, and as long as you're doing it, you know, you're hunting for something that you're going to put in the freezer and you're going to eat and you're going to appreciate that animal regardless if it's, you know, whatever it is, um, you're doing it the right way. And you, you and everybody I know around me um, that hunts, they do it all that way. So um, just keep doing that. And Definitely. Like, I really appreciate everything you said there. But, like, that's my, like, the message I want to send. Like, yes, some videos I post and I don't see any deer in them. Mm-hmm. But I want to also show like the amount of time and effort puts in, especially if these if there's new hunters looking to get into the sport. Yep. Don't get me wrong. The other people that post the content that I post, yeah, they they usually have really good luck and uh, like, but they're not also all hunting upstate New York. So if someone clicks on my video, I want them to like listen. Okay, if you live in upstate New York, it's not easy. It's not. It's not easy. But like the hunting population number is going down dramatically, man. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's bad. So I mean, I'm, I, I'm also using that to encourage them. Like okay, listen, I haven't I haven't seen any deer. Mm-hmm. It's been about a week now, mm-hmm. but I'm still going out. Absolutely. Like you got to be encouraged to still go out and uh, try to find them. I mean, just keep switching locations. And I, maybe I, I I regretted not hunting more state land, but like if you hunt state land up here, man, it's like a war zone, especially open weekend. Yeah. So like yeah, maybe I overhunted the area, but I just want to like spread a message like every time, especially in upstate New York. I mean, other places you might see a deer every time you go out, mm-hmm. but you don't always see a deer, and I want to like spread that message that. 
okay, yeah, I'm posting this video. Yes, I didn't see any deer, but I'm still out there trying. So if you're going to get into deer hunting, just know it's not, okay, you're going to go out there and shoot one your first time. That's it. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot more into it. I haven't shot a slammer buck, and I've been doing it since I was 12 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm 21 now. You so. did get a nice buck last year, though. No, it's, yeah, it's a decent. I'm not, I mean, that's, de- that's dang good buck for you upstate New York. Absolutely. I'm just saying it's not a slammer. I mean, I've seen slammers. I've, mi- I've missed slammers, dude. I have missed multiple deer, and I mean, it's something I have to live with, but I'm still not just going to stop putting the work in. Hopefully, a slammer comes in. I mean, you got to be at the right place at the right time. I'll live with that until the day I die. A thousand percent. And that, you know, and that goes with anything, though. You know, like even with fishing, you know, you look at it that way. Um, it goes, it goes along, you know, with that path of, you know, uh, you, you might, you know, you might cast a line in, you might not even catch anything, you know, you might not even get a snag. I've been to multiple fishing ponds, you know, and I've, I've you know, I've pond hopped, you know, all day and not, not got a single bite, you know. Um, that comes with anything, you know, like if you're, if you're going to be out there, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you're hoping for the best, you know, you know, you're, that's what you're hoping for. Hmm. Um, uh, you're hoping to, you know, see something or you're hoping to catch something or you're hoping to do, you know. Get, get that but that comes with anything in life you know you, you gotta you gotta put the time in and you know you hopefully something comes along and uh whether that be a fish whether that be a, you know a, you know whether that be a deer whether that be a rabbit whether that be you know anything so you just gotta put the time in and if you put the time in you know yeah, anything you put the time into 95 percent of the time it's gonna pay off great quote great quote <laughs> the, the, i mean this is a really great quote because it's people who wait you know good things happen to people who wait absolutely and i live by that man absolutely, i mean man. We'll go, and I mean the old man says he went deerless last season. Yep. Ended up getting a deer this year. Yeah, I I got two last year and I got one this year. It was a tough season, mm-hmm. but now, how was this season for hunting? It's pretty crappy. Was it? Yeah. Now why was that? Especially for like uh, like this area. Like I see, I I say that you know I've been hunting and everything like that, but I don't know like the in depths of hunting. So like, why was this season so much more worse than the past seasons or seasons that you hunted before? I will say, I mean, especially so the end of the bow season towards the end, the rut started hitting, okay. right? When the rut was going on, it was 80 degrees. They never rut in 80 degrees, okay. usually. I mean, they'll rut when that time of year, but it's never been that warm. So I think that definitely has a factor in it. I mean, I talked to multiple, multiple, multiple people and friends, and uh, don't get me wrong, big bucks were killed this year. I mean, locally too. Mm-hmm. But like, all my buddies didn't have that much luck. Like they got deer down, no slammers, mm. and mostly does. But I want to blame it mostly on the weather. Um, and like I said, the population of hunters are down. Mm. There's just no pressure in the woods, man. I mean, They're back in the open. back in the day, I mean, you had the Orange Army going in state land, pushing them off, or the neighboring properties next to you had the Orange Army going in there and popping them out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, bow season was always that slow. Well, actually, no, bow season was decent because there was. Not a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. And if you had them on your property, they were there. It's just you going in, you're not pushing them off. Mm. But even if you did push them off back in the day, like I said, when the Orange Army came out open the day, they either push them back, it's like a game of chess, back and forth. So I think just the, the low number of population of hunters, and then the, due to the warm weather, that'd be my opinion why mm-hmm. this in this area up here is so slow, but it happens. You get seasons like that, man. You really Absolutely, do. Absolutely, man. And uh, that, that's... I sucks from hearing it from me because you know I, I don't really you know I don't I wouldn't know that you know, um, but hopefully next season's better for you. Um, now, quick question for you. Um, I know you got a lot of questions for me, um, but what do you prefer? You like uh, deer hunting or would you take turkey hunting? So, I know I'm putting you in between a hard a, a hard place and a rock right now. Man. A rock and a hard place. Yeah. Um, back in the day, I would definitely say it was turkey. Okay. Because. I, I've never grunted a deer in. Now, I've heard a deer come in grunting. But mm-hmm. I've never, like, you know, responded and grunted it in. Mm-hmm. Now, with turkey, it doesn't matter where you are in the woods. I mean, you're calling that bird in. Yeah. And usually, if he's a talkative bird, he's 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 talking the whole way in. I mean, adrenaline rush like nothing else. Just coming in from and gobbling. From the time one. you hear him start, from the time you have him down? So from the time you owl hoot when they're in the, the tree roosting. Wow. Then you hear him fly out, man. Especially if you can get right up under him and I'll spook him out of a tree. We've had him fly out and first light five minutes in daylight you stand there right then you're gone wow crazy wow. but going back to deer hunting i find more peace and relaxation in it i mean you got more time to think yeah. i mean it, for me hunting's more like you can go out and kind of just you know let every day leave work at home you just leave everything at the door your car go out there and just relax 
you see deer, yes, it's exciting. You got work ahead of you to get a deer. But yeah, I think just going out there, I always say it frees the soul. I mean, it, it really clears your mind, frees the soul. But I haven't been tur- I didn't really do any turkey hunting this past season. Mm-hmm. So uh, definitely, when I was younger, I'll say it was definitely turkey hunting. And I think if I get back into it, I think it would be turkey hunting. But being as I've grown out of turkey hunting here, and I want to actually get back into it, just not a lot of time. Like I said, uh, you only get the weekends mm. for me. And you only get the month of May for spring turkey. Mm-hmm. So I really only get four days. So how much hunting can you do in four days? Because you can only hunt till noon. But uh, The question is, Kyle, Yeah. how much vacation time you got left? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I better get three weeks off, and I can <laughs> help you guys out in some turkey hunting content. But I'm definitely going to get some this year. I promise you that. So I would say if I get into turkey hunting more, it would definitely be turkey hunting. But right now, being as I do a lot more deer hunting, mm-hmm. and I just enjoy the peace and quiet. And when you see a deer, it's just... Dreading like nothing else. And when you do get them to grunt, coming in, man. But, I mean, I've never grunted one in. If you ever sit out in the woods, see a buck chase a doe, which I've seen this year, and hear him grunt, mm-hmm. that's another that's another thing. Because you just see on TV, and you're like, oh, I've seen on TV. You know, I want to see this in real life. Mm-hmm. And it's just, boom. There's, there they are, man, coming in, grunting, scraping leaves, rubbing trees, all pissed off through the rut is something else. They will literally kill themselves in a rut. That's insane. They will run themselves into the ground. Wow. Competition, chasing does, it's unbelievable. Um, so I think you make it even a little harder on you. Um, I'm going to ask you two uh, questions right here, too. I know, you, I know you have questions for me and everything like that. Um, but uh, what do you like more? What do you like recording more? Do you like recording more hunting or do you like to record more fishing? I'm going to say I like to record more um, hunting. Honestly, really, I would have never saw that coming. If I, if you would have asked me that before I knew that answer, I would have definitely said fishing. Really, really, I not not because of like the not because of like the quality is both. You got great hunting videos. You got great you got great fishing videos, but um, I feel like when you're fishing, I can just see like a different like like excitement more out of you more than well because you can I, I guess. I guess I said that because you can be a lot more yourself. Vocal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. vocally and you can um, you know, it's not you know, you're not whispering and things like that. You're you know, you're you can like you said, vocally you can be a lot more vocally and you're having a lot more interaction with like your viewers and not only like um you know, with fishing, but you know, you can you can definitely be more your, your yourself around, you know, instead of being quiet in the woods and things like that. So I use this as an excuse as um if I have a slow day of fishing, mm-hmm. it sucks. But if I have a slow day in hunt, of hunting, I, just, I, I have fun. Really? Still have fun. I mean, because I'm still seeing squirrels. I'm still, I mean, even if I don't see a squirrel, I'm just mm-hmm. still out there relaxing. Now, putting all this effort casting 100 baits into a pond, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just ask yourself, why am I still casting? Yeah. Right? I, so, I mean, I've been on that. I've but I'm also, yeah, exactly. But then I, I say that, but then if you really think about it, why am I still sitting there for two hours after hunting? But I just think I find more peace in the hunting, mm-hmm. and I definitely connect with my viewers a lot more through the hunting. You can definitely tell by the views and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm catching fish, man, it, I still love it. I definitely still love it. Now, um, I'd rather film ice fishing over regular fishing. Wow. I See, if you would have not told me that, I would have also said opposite. And I, not, I don't know the reasoning behind that, but I just feel like, I don't know, man. I absolutely love your, I absolutely love your fishing videos. Whether you catch anything, you go skunked. I, I I love watching you get angry. I love watching you. Know, <laughs> I see all different emotions out, out of you when you're out there. So, um, wow, that's crazy. And I, I, I love making them. I do. I love making them. I'm just saying I would definitely prefer out of any fishing video, regardless to the, the salmon fishing that was out. Yeah, that was, that was insane. crazy. That was insane. I'm so glad you did it on parts, too. Yeah. I liked how you did it, like, you know, one part. You know, I, yeah. I love that. I love how you kept it going and everything like that. There was a lot of content out there. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to go back up there. Uh, next this this uh, summer or spring here. I'm not gonna spoil it because I don't know if we're gonna go out the same species. So we'll keep that in the down low. <laughs> but um, I definitely like filming that. Now, like just because I mean you're going after fish you've never caught before, man. Yeah, man. I mean there's adrenaline rush right there like you've never experienced. I absolutely love that. You, I mean you should go. I mean there's a little seasickness going on, but if you definitely, I would definitely recommend going. But um, ice fishing over regular fishing, you're you're putting a line through a hole, man, and you don't know what you're really gonna get. I mean, you can catch any species in there. Now, yeah. when, you're, when you're open water fishing, you basically know what you're going to catch. You're, yeah. you're targeting. You're targeting a special fish. Exactly. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, and That's a very also, good way to look at it. You know? I, didn't, I didn't really I didn't see that. You know, you can, when you drop a line on a hole, man, 
and ice fishing, you you know, you could, like you said, any species, you can get bass, perch, you can get sunfish, I mean, you get anything. You get a bite and you rip up on that, and the drag starts peeling, you don't know what it is. Yeah, you don't. I mean, yeah, you know at the species that are in the pond, but you don't really know exactly what's on the other end of your line. Yeah. Like in the summer. When you, you get, hook that bait on, you're targeting that specific right. fish. Absolutely. A thousand percent correct. And also, I have fun whether I'm not catching a lot out on the ice. I don't know what it is about the cold and everything <laughs> I like know. that. I'm trying, to th- I'm trying to figure that out for you, man. Like, you're over here. Like, anything that deals with cold, you're, you're, you're game for I it. Because you're, you're in a shanty. You're in a shanty. You're yeah. out there. You're, you have your heater on, man. You got your aqua view down the hole. You just see these fish moving around. Now, it's just uh, objective to get them to bite is the thing. But, I mean, if you, if you don't get anything, if your buddies are still catching, it's still fun, man. It's just it's a big group thing. I mean, that's why, like, if I had, had, like, group hunts. Like, I went on a hunt with Noah there this this past fall here, and, or this winter, I should say. And, uh, I mean, we had a blast, man. You just get sitting up blind with each other. You get a couple good laughs, get out and rattle, make a, jokes and stuff. <laughs> we saw some deer out in the distance. But it's just the fact of, yeah, we didn't kill anything. If you're not catching fish, I mean, yeah, we didn't kill anything then. But it's just still fun to be out there with your friends. Same thing with ice fishing. I might not catch anything. But, you know, you might catch a whole bunch of fish. And it's still a blast for me to see. Or we're both not catching anything. We're still having fun and laugh, you know? Something you're going to take the grave with you. Absolutely. But. Well, you got to promise me one thing, though. What's up? I don't want a handshake on it, too. All right? All right. We're doing a lot more fishing to come this summer. Are we? Absolutely. Me and you. Me and you. A thousand percent. All right. I mean, I'm down. I want a handshake. I'll handshake right now, buddy. All right, bro. All right. We got to do it because. Because you're over here saying, you know, you're not having fun because you're out there by yourself. I'm going to be out there with you. Yeah, I mean, hell yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, I have my viewers with me, obviously. I know. I I'm know. talking to a camera. I know. I, I mean, got you. These drivers going by think I'm crazy, but <laughs> I love doing it. I really I do. do I, I love doing it. It's just the fact that. I love that, that you're chasing your dream, bro. I love it too, man. And yeah, I, I, I wish you the best on all your dreams too, man. You just put the work in, bro, man. Just ride the wave, bro. Just ride the wave. That's all you gotta do. And like going back to the hunt, I know we're jumping all back and forth. That's here, the thing but. about podcasts, bro. You can go anywhere you want, bro. We're on the first one here, folks. Bear with us here. We're doing. I think we're doing pretty damn good. We are doing pretty damn good. But um, buying the old man a GoPro, and you know, putting him on the camera. That was insane. He he did. He got better footage than I did. I know it was crazy. I I didn't expect him to even hit the freaking play button. To be honest with you, you tell him that story. No, you didn't. You didn't tell him behind the scenes on that one. No, not really. I mean, <laughs> I get. I mean. We're here we are. I'm sitting up there opening in the afternoon and boom. I pick up the camera and tell him, Okay, old man just shot. I hope you got the big buck, blah, blah blah. If it's a doe, I don't care, it's still cool. And uh boom. So the old man just shot again, that must be a good sign. Either he's putting it down or he really messed, but I'm like the shots were too far apart for yeah. like him to be like a mess, you know, usually it's boom as he's running boom. Yeah. So I'm like, Okay, he walked up on it, put it down, you know, for good. Um so I'm like, I'm gonna peek over this hill and I didn't see anything, so I snuck down to him. And uh, he searched him. He's like, I can't find blood. I'm like, well, where was he standing? <laughs> right? He goes, well, I got the first shot on the camera. I'm like, you got it on camera? <laughs> yeah, I got it on camera. I said, is the thing still rolling in the, in the, sh- the shed we built over the summer? Yeah. Or the shanty there. And he goes, yeah, it's still rolling. So I'm like, Jesus, I mean, he, he hit the play button. Like, that's, that's just. Now, mind you guys, mind you. Our old man is not technically advanced oh, at all. Nothing. He doesn't know. If you gave him, if you even gave him like the smallest thing that has buttons or anything to do with electronics, he's out of it. He's out of commission. Out of commission. He I mean, I'm blessed that there's only one button he has to push. But I mean, still, in the he moment still did it. I've had, I've, I've shot deer. And I'm like, yeah, I got the camera here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this button. Now when they're they're coming in, man, you just you either just forget Tunnel. or you think you yeah tunnel vision. You think you hit it and you just oh well oh, I got my I got the crosshairs on it, but did I? I yeah I hit play. Yeah, I definitely hit play. Definitely play. Boom, and then you go back and you're like I didn't hit play. <laughs> so it's just, but no, I was so happy that he could get that on film, man. It's it's incredible, it's especially good. like For him. I it's bought him the GoPro. Good. That's all he had. Got both shots on film, and uh, the second one connected. The first one he hit the tree with. But hey, we didn't. We just couldn't find blood because we couldn't really find the area was standing, and we could see where it tumbled over, and we found the deer just like that. But just, I mean, getting him out there, and I mean, I think it, it was. I can't say it's easier, man, because he he did a hell of a job. I'm just he saying, did. like he had the he had it set up on the the shed there, and I have a tripod. I'm trying to move around as I'm, you know, trying to scan out. Yeah. I'm out in the open. Maybe I should make a shed just like that. Make another one, place it in a different okay. area. On the summer. That's right. It might be another video for you guys yeah. to see, but um. No, he did a great job doing that, and uh, I, the next day I ended up getting one right in the same piece of woods, 
just not as good as content. But I mean, self film is hard. It, I, is, man. it really I, is hard. I give you, like I said, I give you a thousand percent props on that. You give me props, but I'm not really not a professional yet. I mean, no, I, I, I got, I, know, but like I, I got shots in the distance. Not really. I mean, it's it's tough. It, I, I, the, the, you know, I've seen like you know, I've, you, you've like walked me through the setups of like what you got to do out in the woods and how you set it up and you know try to get like the best angles for your viewers and everything like that. And just hearing those stories of like what you you know you know the length you go through just to try to get like you know the best shot or you know where you think the deer is going to come out and try to like angle the camera to that area. All right. Um, you know, that's all predictions, you know, they can, Amen. you know, they can come from anywhere in those woods, you know, and, you know, try to like predict where, like, where the best angle is for these cameras. It's just insane, you know, and, you know, you see like, a lot of these like high end YouTubers, um, you know, they have, you know, camera crews, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, that's what makes, you know, that's what makes like their, I want to say like it better, but it's so much more easier. What do they got to really worry about? You know? I mean, exactly. I like, mean, you I, got I, you I, got a lot on your shoulders when you come to see a deer. You know, I'll, I say it like this, and I heard it on YouTube before. You're trying to shoot the deer twice. <laughs> That's a good, that damn right. Yeah, damn you're trying to right. shoot it twice. You got to shoot it with the gun and shoot it with the camera at the same time, and it's sometimes it's even impossible to shoot the deer once. <laughs> and when those bigger YouTubers there that you're just explaining, um, I give them props because if the camera guy doesn't get on them, they don't shoot it. No, I don't, I don't know if I can push myself to that limit yet, <laughs> especially living in the area I do. And now if I lived in an area where I know, okay, tomorrow that guy's going to be back or, yeah. I mean, up here, it's it's inevitable. I mean, they could be gone. Yeah. They could, especially if it's the rut, they could be off your property. They'll run miles chasing dough, man. Yeah. So, uh, it's definitely tough, but, uh, something we're working on. Definitely Absolutely. improving on the gear every year as much as we can afford it. And, uh, just keep going, man. Yeah. I really love the passion. And I love, you know, and I love like, you know, I love that what we're, what we're doing right here. You know, this is our first, first podcast. Um, and you know, I wouldn't say this is like your out, outside your comfort zone, but it's definitely different for you. Definitely. Um, you know, and you know, you, you've, you've done a lot of research obviously prior to this because right. you know, you, I know my brother, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't just, you know, he just, he doesn't pull the trigger on things that he doesn't think he's going to, you know, use or do anything with. Um, so, you know, like during the winter or things like that. And I think, you know, we should keep this going. We a thousand percent should keep this going. We oh, should, we're definitely uh, gonna keep it going. I I, I want it like I I'm, I'm absolutely having a blast. You know, it's just two you know two brothers sitting in a room and you know having a conversation, and um, I think I think this could go places, man. I think this is like a good like mix up too. You know, definitely you, you have a lot of hunting, fishing, and things like that, but you throw in a different genre of this. You know, it's just two two dudes sitting down having a conversation about you know outdoors, right. and you know, and like I said in the beginning of the video. Um, it could be it could be anything you really wanted to, you know. I know you know you you attract um, a lot of outdoors peoples and things like that. But even if you know maybe you know leave down in the comments what what you guys want to see. What do you want to see? What do you want us to talk about? You know, it could be anything. It Actually, be good anything. point. Leave anything in the comments you guys want us to really talk about. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, leave it in the comments. You know, and and you know, I know my brother. If I know my brother, I know that you know you get <laughs> you get him and Noah on a freaking podcast. You're gonna hear politics definitely. Um, I don't know if you guys are into that, but he can definitely talk politics and you know give his point of view on things like that. But I think you know anything you can do anything with this, bro. Yeah, definitely. I Absolutely. mean, and uh, like I said in the beginning, it's just like it's not something we're used to. Nope. But life's a book, life's a chapter. Absolutely. And uh, podcasts are actually a popping off thing, so hopefully it can yeah. pop off. But if not, I mean, we're still having fun doing yeah, this, brother. Absolutely, brother. I mean, I mean, this is about a blast, man. We, we've been talking to. 40 minutes just about 40 is flowed by like it's nothing uh, yeah. but i mean this is a beginner set but this is i mean give me your opinion on this set right here it, dude it's absolutely insane i dude you, before we even hit play all right so my brother comes over he puts these headphones on i put he gives me these headphones he says put them on i put them on and uh you know i start talking and i'm like you know obviously i didn't know like the playback you know hearing yourself and hit that that's crazy you know you can actually hear how loud you are you know for the viewers you know so you're not talking right. too high you know you can hear you know i can hear him talking to me um, but dude, this is like great starting, starting set. Dude. And, this and, is abs- and it's portable. Right. It's portable. It's, it's portable. You I should, I should, great point. Cause I want to actually add this. I mean, so when we're going to keep going forward with this, don't worry. There's also going to be always ice fishing. This is just when it's slower or when I think you guys want some more dude, content. Should, I mean, there's always just something like, and especially in the winter from like the transition from hunting season to ice fishing season. Like I explained in the last video, you gotta wait for the ice. You gotta wait. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's only so much time you can wait for a safe ice. You can't Absolutely. really do anything. Yeah. There's coyote hunting, but how much coyote hunting can you do? Yep. So when we have this podcast, we can talk about anything, anything, man. anything. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how much, I mean, so definitely something I want to look forward to and keep doing this. I mean, this set you can upgrade. 
I mean, you don't have yeah. to buy a whole new set. You can just keep buying parts and bonus pieces. Yeah, so when, when we mean portable, you might not even see the same, you know. I, oh, you're not going to. Yeah, you're just going to, I mean, I'll head over to Noah's house. We'll do one there yeah. at home. Maybe yeah. with the Josh's, maybe with the Justin's. All, bu- all my buddies, man. So, Absolutely. I mean, it's portable. You know, you, you, you guys know. are not going to see the same background. <laughs> We're going to be portable. We're going to keep moving. Yeah. yeah, we can do one outside in the summer. Yeah, do it. Beautiful, right? Have the fire in the background. Beautiful, you That'd know. That would be awesome, man. Right? That would be awesome. But I think the moral of the story is we're both on the same page for hunting. And uh, I think if it came to life or death, that you could definitely kill a deer. Oh, You're absolutely. not against it. I mean, you love the meat. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could definitely kill a deer. Um, I mean, sh- shit. I, first good. swear word, man. Hey, hey, right at the end. Right at the end, baby. Word. That's good. I said shit, and I'm sorry, but I said it. Here we go. Um, I mean, shit, I already, sh- you know, I shot at one. So, you know, I'm, my objective was to kill that deer. Right. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think I could kill a deer if it comes down to it. Um, I'm not a fish person, but I love catching fish. I'll never, I mean, I don't think I could. You know, if it comes down to life or death. Oh, I definitely, you could do it. A fish. Um, but, yeah, like you said, I could definitely, I, I could bring myself to kill a deer and, you know, and use it for the right purposes of, yeah. you know, eating it and things like that. Um, but definitely, dude, I could definitely do it. Well, man, I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a blessing. Bro. The first guest ever on the podcast. Dude, I really I appreciate can't it. Wait to get back, dude. Oh, we're gonna you'll be back. Trust All me, right, folks. Bro. We have so many things we can talk about, so much info and uh tactics and everything. But if you guys like these podcasts, make sure to smash that like button. Yes, sir. And be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you guys know notified every time I post a video. Comment down below what you guys want us to talk about. We'll we'll make sure we cover all those topics. But it's been a blessing. It's been the first time we ever do this. But um, we're going to keep doing this. And I uh, appreciate you guys all watching. Like I said, let me know what you guys want us to talk about. Leave a like so I know you guys are enjoying the content. And subscribe, brother. Really appreciate you. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be back soon. Love you all. Have a good night.